welcome Corey and justin here uh project review so today we're taking you through binance bnb coin and their stable coin busd so justin i'll give you the honors you betcha so always coming back to coin gecko here going down the list as Corey mentioned we're gonna be looking at bnb today so i've seen a little bit of movement here on the week but for the most part, market is just kind of sitting sideways, no really big moves. So jumping into BNB, all the information we love CoinGecko for, so market caps right up there, number six, I believe, number, sorry, number five. Um, and then always looking at our supplies. So circulating supply and total supply, we are... Everything that's out there is circulating, which is great to see. And then the max supply. So Corey and I were looking at this kind of a strange number. Uh, b and has a, a burn mechanism. Corey, do you want to touch on that a bit more? Yeah. So they burn supply. It's similar to a buyback me mechanism that you see in the stock markets, like stock buybacks. Uh We'll see how the SEC and the Securities Exchange Commission uh, treat that, but uh, that's why Binance is under fire a lot of the times uh, as a potential security. But um, as an investor, that's a decent thing just because they're buying back stocks, getting those off out of the circulating supply, and it lowers the available supply so as an investor you know that typically means that there's a better chance that it's going to go up in value you know limiting supply typically there's more cash flow moving towards that remaining supply so uh, Binance is king when it comes to exchanges out there and uh, they really set the pace when they came out with the BNB token and then uh, what they do with it. So I remember <laughs> collecting it for trading fees and then I would sell it once I'd hit to, you know, five, 10 BNB or whatever, convert it and start trading it. The last time I did that was, it was at $14 and then it spiked to basically where it was today. It almost hit a thousand dollars because of some of the use cases that they bring with BNB tokens. So some of it was on the website that Justin was scrolling through there, but basically get into launch pads, uh, their staking opportunities and all sorts of different things that uh, basically gets you to, or they want you to hold their tokens. So it's kind of like a, a VIP pass into some of their uh, higher level programs. So, it's come a long ways. Um, I don't see Binance going anywhere anytime soon. It is definitely dropped off as far as usability or users. Once they implemented KYC, a lot of those users did go to KuCoin, but it was uh, a decision that they made. So they want to be more regulated, more um, institutional friendly. And that's why they've made some of these changes. But as far as holding BNB, uh, I definitely would look at having at least a little bit. Uh, we use it for some of the De DeFi side of things too, using PancakeSwap. Uh, you need to have BNB in your wallet to engage on the protocol and make trades. So that's where it's the gateway into the BSC chain as well. And uh, basically a pinnacle into, it's just like Bitcoin accessing the rest of the crypto markets. BNB is what's needed to access the BSC network, uh, PancakeSwap, which is the highest volume DEX out there. And uh, yeah, you can get rewards too. So not that I you know spend too much time on those rewards, uh, some of the IDOs are incredibly profitable. It's just a totally different strategy. A lot of research, a lot of time invested, but uh, it's there. That opportunity is there. So sometimes that uh, is the best strategy for, depending on who you are and what your lifestyle is. Um, just time commitments, basically. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, B Binance with the BSC chain really evolved and opened up the DeFi world to. You know, normal retail, Ethereum kind of was the king, but as we all know, gas fees were so high. 
it's difficult for a lot of people just getting into this space to to start in DeFi with some of those fees. Where and then the BSC chain came in and made, you know, it's like eight cents, ten cents. It's it it just hovers around that. It's usually under a dollar. I don't think I've ever seen it over a dollar. So it just opened up that access to DeFi to the masses. Um, and then BNB is that that native token. That's your gas token and. There's so many other things that that Binance has implemented with BNB, as Corey touched on the staking. Like Binance has really come up in the exchange world to make access to crypto as easy as possible. The the KYC thing, you know that 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 definitely damaged some reputation. But I mean, they're still they're still going. They're still pumping. They're they're making sure that they're following all these different regulations for all the different countries that they're trying to operate in. The States has a little bit of a different, different outlook on regulations and whatnot. So Binance shifted gears and has specific products and services just for the States, just to keep that, that availability open to anyone in crypto. I just, they've done some amazing things. Yeah. I like that. They're not catering to the States. They got the Binance us, but, uh, a lot of the, you know, Latin America's um, just other wealthy nations are getting involved with uh, Binance. And uh, I use the peer to peer function quite regularly to uh, get into my fiat currencies, whether that's, uh, you know, Mexican peso or Indonesian rupiah, uh, wherever I was traveling, I would just set up a bank account, use the peer to peer function and get uh, local cash to save on those fees, you know, rather than using my Mexican debit card in Valley or whatever. Uh, it's an option, you know, just do the research if it's worthwhile, do it. If not, then yeah, traditional banks for spending cash or ATMs or yeah, obviously crypto is <laughs> preferred, but uh, not always taken. So they've come a long ways. Definitely. It's one of the main exchanges that I use all the time. And I uh, have always had a really good experience. Um, no major issues, nothing, you know, shady. And they have seemed to really solidified themselves in the space too. So uh, definitely one to consider. I can't say that I hold large amounts, but definitely, like I was saying, for uh, accessing DeFi, that's where it is the gateway. So yeah and as for holding if you're interested in holding um they're widely accepted like all major wallets have a bsc or a bmp type wallet available to you ledger trezor um trezor our favorite here but you know all the online wallets um even some of the smaller hot wallets and beginner wallets like coinami bsc man they they run the game just a quick warning, uh, make sure if you are depositing into those wallets that it is the correct network. Uh, BSC network is its own network, whereas a lot of those are Ethereum based ERC20 BNB tokens. So just a <laughs> quick word of caution. That's a good point. Yeah. So so BNB um, did start off on the Ethereum network like so many other projects until they got their own BSC chain running. So Yes, very, be very cautious. Usually there's a lot of warnings on some of these wallets, but it's it's pretty easy if you've done this over and over again to, to get complacent and yeah. Yeah, heed the warnings, heed the warnings. Yeah, and then uh, BUSD is the other side of things. So they're definitely um, making waves in the space. So if you've watched our previous videos on Tether, you would know that we're not a huge fan uh, just because of some of the uncertainty and the lack of transparency within that company where BUSD uh, has partnered with Paxos, I do believe, to come up with a highly regulated um, alternative, basically. So uh, Binance is reducing their USDC pairs, their TUSD pairs, and those will all be converted into BUSD. So nothing against those coins they're uh the only issue is the liquidity side of things so rather than having you know three different pairs you focus that liquidity and reduce market risk by really backing things up so uh backed by dollars is a huge thing so held by reserves in either fiat cash or uh, insured u.s banks so treasury bills 
right? So hugely, hugely important. Uh, Tether, again, watch that video if you haven't. They're backed by mostly co mostly corporate debt. So we saw in 2008 how that can be you know, a big issue when people are trying to get their cash out and not able to. You got to convert those uh, debts into cash and that's not always easy to do. So uh, BUSD is going to be, well, the only pair eventually by the sounds of things on Binance. So um, yeah, there'll be a lot of, a lot of incentives. Um, we've seen some issues with stable coins lately. Uh, Luna crisis was a big one. So that's where BUSD is a viable alternative. And then you can diversify your wealth from there. So USDC is mostly Solana network or officially Solana network, whereas BUSD is the official B, uh, BSC network. And uh, yeah, of course, we're going to diversify networks, diversify opportunities and diversify risk. So this is a big one that I use myself personally. And uh, yeah, I see this just being the beginning for BUSD. Yeah, definitely a lot of a lot of development coming into that space and, and Binance keeps pushing it. And then this is one of the main things I look for is, is what's it backed by? And are they regulated? Are they audited? Do they have to provide proof? And as Corey said, when we went through Tether, they they don't get audited. They 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 have to provide proof. I think once a year it was, um, and I think that's optional. They really don't have to because of how their company is structured. Where you know Binance really went the extra mile to make sure that everything is regulated and following the rules to make sure Binance is still going to be around regardless of all these regulations that come in place. Now, things can change quite quickly, but finance seems to be very reactionary and, and make sure that they can still provide that service for their customers. Yeah, and that's where PancakeSwap, I believe, really came into existence, came into play, was so that the uh, individuals that wanted to avoid KYC and continue trading independently can do so, whereas, you know, the Binance platform itself is more no, more for institutional style investors um even just setting up a sub account i think you need 10 btc or 100 btc uh <laughs> which is a little bit out of reach for most individual traders right so um again you know that's why we use kucoin but binance itself you've got a great variety of coins they've got a lot going for them so uh i do see them going to be they're going to be around for years to come they're definitely making the right moves and diversifying just like we always recommend so uh, i don't have anything else on binance i know we try and keep these somewhat tight but yeah that's really all i got it's uh yeah i mean i think most people really start with binance because it is you know a top dog KYC definitely moves some people away, but I mean, it's still ticking. It's still number one exchange. It's what people are familiar with. They've got all the features. And then what I love is they they brought limit orders to PancakeSwap. I think they were the first, one of the first decks to do that. And that just, that opens up a lot of doors in the DeFi world. So yeah. very exciting mm -hmm. to see. Absolutely. So uh, let us know in the comments what you enjoyed, uh, if anything was unclear, and any topics that you want us to cover in future episodes. So that's it for this week. We'll see you same time, same place next week. Take care, everyone.